thank you. I'm, uh, I'm uh, very happy to share uh, my research with uh, IRES and uh, IOF, some IOF students. Um, today I will speak about the climate change impact on Canada's Pacific marine ecosystem. And basically I will uh, uh, share some preliminary findings about the, uh, the state of knowledge on climate change impact on, on Canada's Pacific marine ecosystem. So uh, uh, first I will, uh, I will uh, give a brief uh, background of uh, uh, British Columbia's fisheries, uh, then I will talk about climate change effect in the ocean and species globally, and uh, then I will present uh, the systematic literature review that, that I did, and uh, then uh, some uh, findings that I, uh, I, I got with a meta-analysis that I did with vulnerability assessments, and then uh, some of the conclusions. So, but First, I will I will start with uh, with a, a bit of a background of, of uh, BC's fisheries, and uh, so BC's fisheries over uh, more than 160,000 ton of metric tons are landed in British Columbia, <coughs> and this is uh, about 20% of of total uh, Canadian landings and uh, around 390,000 million. Uh, uh, there is a, uh, is a value of, uh, of the fisheries in British Columbia and uh, the distribution of, uh, of, uh, of the fisheries of, uh, of the fisheries are the ground fish mainly 50 50 percent then small and large pelagic and invertebrates which is a very small contribution and one of the main differences between our fisheries in British Columbia and the Atlantic fisheries in Canada is that uh, uh, the Atlantic uh, fisheries are uh, uh, much more focused on invertebrates, especially on lobster and shrimps and crab. So those account around for 75% of uh, the total value of, uh, of, uh, of uh, fisheries uh, revenue in, in, in Canada. Also, we know that in British Columbia, fisheries are important for First Nations and for uh, economically, socially, and culturally. And um, uh, also the importance of fisheries is for seafood consumption. Uh, in Canada, there is around 24, 24 kilograms uh, of consumption uh, uh, per uh, kilogram uh, uh, per capita annually. And uh, this is uh, higher than the average, the global average, and, and much higher than this in South America, which is 10 kilograms. Uh, around 85% of, uh, of, the, of the fish caught in British Columbia, in, in Canada, sorry, is uh, exported. Uh, and around the same quantity is imported. So we, we consume, maybe we consume a big of chunk of fisheries from outside Canada. Um, and um, the main markets, uh, export markets, are the U.S., China, Japan, and the European Union. That is in an importance order. And, um, and the main importing countries are from the U.S., Thailand, China, Peru, and Chile. So, <coughs> what, uh, what are the, the effects of climate change on the oceans? Uh, the oceans have captures around 20 uh, six percent of uh, of uh, human-derived CO2 emissions. Uh, also, uh, the oceans has absorbed around 90, <coughs> 93 percent of extra additional heat in the Earth, and um, and uh, leading to warming. And also, they collect almost uh, all the uh, water from uh, melting ice. Uh, so this is these are some of the climate changes in the ocean, but there is many other changes, uh, such as uh, dissolved ox oxygen, changes in salinity, changing in stratification, uh, changing in ocean circulation patterns, and many others. And these changes in the ocean are uh, impacting uh, marine species and dif in, in different ways. For example, changes, we, have, uh, we know that there is a uh, some of the effects are in the changes in body size of marine species, on the reproduction, on the habitat. Also, we know that uh, 
uh, this is uh, uh, climate change uh, is affecting population growth, abundance, and species distribution. And uh, also there is changes in uh, trophic interaction and biodiversity. And this is ultimately leading to changes in the catch and the fisheries, economics, revenues, price of the fish. So um, this large and complex chain of climate change effect uh, uh, makes the study of uh, fisheries under climate change very uh, complicated and highly multidisciplinary. So that uh, which include uh, social and natural sciences. And I had this big, very big question because of the, the complexity nature of the, the topic and how changes in the ocean are, impact, are impacting marine ecosystem and fisheries in British Columbia. Uh, <clears throat> so to understand uh, climate change impact in, 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 BC, and in BC marine um, ecosystem and fisheries, I conducted a literature review. Uh, and uh, I, I raise a different subset of questions that captures these large chains of effect of climate change uh, addressed by different dif disciplinary backgrounds, oceanography, uh, marine biology, uh, fishery science, um, and I did a literature search for each of, of, the, of this area of the subject. And uh, I used multiple, multiple uh, library databases to explore each of these questions or topic using more than 300 words for each search. I also filtered the search to be specific for Canada and British Columbia and limited to the last four years because uh, I found that there was uh, uh, several studies uh, uh, before 2014 and uh, and that was the big chunk of literature that we have. And, uh, and then I was curious what, ha what was going on after 2014 and 2017. Um, so I found uh, this included a peer review papers and scientific reports. And uh, what I found is uh, more than 1,800 uh, scientific articles. And, uh, this number was reduced uh, to 100 approximately after applying the subsequent filters of uh, place and years and after reading the abstracts and, uh, and getting rid of the repetition in other areas that were just uh, there. And, um, and most of the, of the uh, uh, library databases that has these scientific articles, scientific art articles of the web of science, the aquatic science and fisheries abstract, which are, and the federal science library, the DFO, which are specific, the last two that are specific, uh, specialized fisheries uh, databases. And for the last two, which are the ec economic and social sciences databases, I didn't find almost anything about that. So, uh, Um, then I, I classify these articles in, uh, according to the main group or topics, and this is what I found. Most of the topics are, in, uh, are related to the, to the climate change effect on marine species. Uh, some, there is a, after also changes in the ocean conditions, uh, which is uh, also in the, in the ocean conditions I included uh, hydrology and uh, permafrost impact on the stream flow uh, which is connected with also with uh, marine fisheries um, and uh, in the socioeconomic and governance areas I found as I said around the three articles uh, in each of them um, so this is a, a very brief uh, summary of the changes uh, that we are seeing in British Columbia. So in the ocean conditions, uh, sea surface temperatures are increasing by 0.1 degrees Celsius per decade. Uh, this is around the same as the global average. The projected increase are 
uh, estimated at around 3 degrees Celsius in the next 50 years. Uh, um, also, the effect on marine species, uh, th this will impact uh, and actually is already impacting, uh, impacting salmon survival growth at multiple development stages. And uh, um, also there is a significant uh, uh, consequence for a mollusk in terms of ocean acidification. Um, then in terms of the socioeconomic, there is predicted changes in catches, revenues and price of marine species. And uh, also there is other studies which, are, uh, which uh, present some, uh, some uh, uh, explore what would be the, the impact on First Nations, especially in the Salish, uh, Salish Sea shorelines. Um, but this is just one study. And um, in terms of governance, uh, the topic that there, there are uh, out there is the transba transboundary stock management. We have a few stocks uh, that we share with the U.S. So uh, this is uh, a high relevant uh, 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 issue with climate change uh, because we are expecting that the species, and actually is already occurring, are moving toward the poles. And uh, also there is some, one study about management of endangered species under climate change. Um, so uh, this is a very, uh, is a summary, a very uh, as a, a general summary. There is a lot of, the, uh, there is a lot of going on with climate change. And uh, so I had this, uh, uh, this uh, question uh, about how can I present, uh, have a, be a, a better picture about what are the main species that are going to be impacted by climate change in British Columbia. So I conducted a vulnerability assessment, a meta-analysis of different vulnerability assessment because uh, most of the, uh, with, what I, I didn't mention is that uh, most of the studies uh, that I found in uh, related to marine species and climate change in British Columbia are related to, the sam to salmon, Pacific salmon. So I was just wondering where are the other marine species and I found them in, in big vulnerability assessments and uh, I had uh, 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 four or five big vulnerability assessments and uh, with a score for uh, the species uh, and uh, so I, uh, this, uh, the, I, I, I built a table and I combined those, those uh, uh, scores of each vulnerability assessment and, uh, and actually that's a, uh, it's a quite tricky to understand because it's not a vulnerability, only vulnerability, it's a sensitivity, those assessments, uh, there, is a, there is assessment on sensi sensitivity, adaptive capacity, exposure and risk of impact to climate change. So uh, I conducted a vulnerability assessment uh, focusing on 89 marine species where there was most, the most information, we have the most uh, information. And, uh, the, and these are the, the main uh, literature assessment, the, the vulnerability assessment uh, that I used. And most of them are from 2014 and 2017 between this uh, within this period but I included also because I found it was interesting to include some all the uh, vulnerability assessment of marine fishes to fishing because overfishing also is a is a big issue globally so I thought that that would be important to include in this assessment and uh, these are some of the results um, so these are the vulnerability score for the most economic valuable species in BC on the x-axis. You see the score using a scale from uh, 0 to 100 and being the highest score, the most vulnerable, vulnerable to climate change. And on the y-axis, the top 10 economic valuable species in BC. According to this analysis, the top 10 valuable, from the top 10 valuable species, the most vulnerable are sockeye salmon, Pacific herring, Dungeness crab, Pacific halibut. Um, I also was curious about uh, 
which taxonomic group in British Columbia were most vulnerable. And uh, uh, this is what I found. Uh, the, the most echinoderms and mollusks are the most vulnerable taxonomic group. And um, the, in, in the echinoderms, the green sea urchin uh, is, the, is the most vulnerable species and between the mollusks, within the mollusks group, the abalone and different type of clams are very vulnerable. So, uh, here's the some of the conclusions. Climate change is already impacting BC's marine ecosystem and fisheries. Uh, significant natural science literature available on marine species and changing ocean condition under climate change. An important uh, gap on the socioeconomic and governance component of climate change effect in Canada's Pacific marine ecosystem. Pacific salmon, herring, crab and Pacific halibut are amongst the most vulnerable species to climate change in BC and crustaceans and mollusks are the taxonomic groups more vulnerable to climate change in BC. So, uh, to finish, just to mention that my thesis uh, research seeks to fill up this gap uh, on the socioeconomic component of climate change. Thank you. And I want to say thanks to, to Rashid, William, and Philippe, and also colleagues at IOF and IRES, Andres, Gabriel, and Laura, <laughs> for their help. Yeah. Any question? Yes. Yes, it makes sense. Um, and I'm not a specialist on, on marine biology and oceanography, so it's hard to me. I would have to start like a specific research on that, on that areas and just to say these are priorities. But that's actually something that I I thought about uh, about making a kind of diagram uh, and uh, showing what are the specific sub subtopic for each of, of them and where eventually it could be, uh, uh, we, 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 can, we have gaps actually to, to make, uh, and uh, yeah, and uh, for the socioeconomic and governance, uh, that's much harder because uh, there, there is only a few papers on that. So it requires to think about how, uh, what is how how to think about socioeconomic in terms of climate change, and and uh, uh, and, I, and that's one of the challenges. For example, one of my second chapter will be about uh, the ch how changes in price will in, in in price of species will affect the household budget. For example, like the money that we spend on 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 some species on, on fishes. But ju that's just a way to see socioeconomic. There is a, a other bunch of of way to see socioeconomic. And uh, in terms of governance, for example, there is a lot of also um, thinking that we have to do about it. Yeah. Yeah.
Yeah. Yeah, it would be interesting to, to see as, uh, is, if it's related to funding, that there is more funding available for natural sciences than uh, for social science. I don't know, especially, but uh, that could be some clue about it. And uh, yeah. Hadi? Sorry? Um, yes, yeah, yes. Yes, and climate change, yeah. That's a good. That's a good uh, way to see. Yeah, I will consider it. Yeah. But well, the 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 overfishing, the uh, uh, the vulnerability to fishing uh, is just one score of the of the of, of other like four assessment uh, scores. So it, uh, I don't think it it's only it, I can I can like to revise that, but I don't think it 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 is because of the fishing, because the other yeah. Well, the thing is, is that the halibut have different stocks, one in, in, in the US and one in the Alaska. And uh, the one that uh, are moving, we are getting halibut from the US, but in lower, but in, it's, it's much smaller, the, the stock is much smaller. Uh, and the stocks in Alaska are just moving toward the north. So there is, uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you.